Hello and welcome to Feathercast. My name is Rich Bowen, and today we're going to be talking to one of our Apache projects, Apache Heron. Now, Heron's in the incubator, which means that it's not yet a top level project at the Apache Software Foundation. We've talked about the incubator before, so you're probably already familiar with it. It's the place where projects go to learn how to run a project within the Apache Software Foundation. So Heron's still in that category, and I'm gonna be talking with one of the committers on the project about the project in general, where they are in the incubator, and any other topics that come up during our time together. So thanks for joining us, and we'll get to the interview now. I'm here with Josh Fisher, who is a committer on the Apache Heron project, and that's Apache Heron Incubating. And I already mentioned a little bit about what that means, but uh, so let's jump in here. What What is Apache Heron? So Apache Heron, you know, uh, by definition is a distributed uh, fault tolerant stream processing engine. You know, that's that's the textbook, you know, definition. But, you know, what does that really mean? Yeah, I read that on the website. What's that mean? <laughs> uh, so Heron is a distributed system that runs it runs over many machines, right? So it allows bigger companies and, you know, probably our, our star uh, company that uses Twitter, right? So they they okay. process they process millions of events in real time, or you know you can also use the world near real world time, reliably, reliably and distributed systems. Isn't two words that go to uh, they they go together well? You know right. you have to. There's a lot of things that go in uh, below the covers to make data processing reliable happen, and uh, that's kind of where Heron fits in. So you mentioned Twitter. Um, what's what's something at more human scale? Um, something that I might actually have connection with that would use this or is this only for for hyperscale type situations you know there are many stream processing engines out, out there you know there's um there's storm uh there's fling which is you know it's a little bit of a variation of and um to me i i think heron really is more of your your heron is a system that's really meant to build and 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 move the bigger data sets you know it's um it's not a cheap system to run but it really moves the data across efficiently really well um so companies like twitter companies um, like credit card payment processors would be the kind of companies that would really benefit from an engine like heron so in the past i worked with with openstack i was a community manager on there and one of the things that that i hear similar here is that it's going to be difficult to attract hobbyist developers to work on this kind of project because they don't have the infrastructure for it have you have you encountered that i have you know that that's actually a problem we're facing right now with adoption is that one heron is was built in a way that it has a plug and play architecture so there's different like a state manager there's um there's a log manager there's all these different parts that you can plug and play and because of that it's very hard to manage and operate yeah. um and so Adoption has been challenging because there's only a set of us that really know how to operate yeah. Heron really, really well. Or have the need for it. Yeah, yeah. Or, or have the need for it. I mean, there's there's many other simpler tools out there, um, but there's there really is a beauty that Heron has that if you really have that problem, it really fits it well. What is your role on the project? You're, you're a committer, right? Correct, yes. Okay. Um, so the way i was introduced to heron was back when it was in the twitter days i was working on a i was working on a project where we were trying to do real-time fraud detection and credit card processing hmm. uh, we had a solution that worked didn't really work well it tended to fall over a lot when it hit a lot of load you know because um, the system would process um had the capability of processing you know like fifty thousand transactions per second it was you know very fast you know it was very you know data everywhere you know trying to make things work uh, efficiently was you know you think if you go up and you buy something you swipe a card you expect it to come back pretty quickly so right. um so the part i play is probably closer to the community manager um you know i i, I came into heron and i i built an api into it and i found that in the community there's, we have some really technical people already who are much better than me. So I kind of, you know, I kind of fill this role of community manager unofficially. Um, and it just kind of works for me. The people I'm looking for are the people who are hungry for innovation, right? It's like, how can we take this thing? How can we make it better? How can we make yeah. it easier to use? You know, how can we really, how can we really build the bridge from, you know, developing to actual deployment? You know, there's so many steps along the way to manage this system. Uh, well that you know there's there's so much work to be done and you know anybody who has anybody who has the need to you know to get hungry and learn some really cool tech is the people we're looking for 
you're in the incubator. Um, where where are you in that process? How close are you? How, how do you, close do you, I mean, it, it's always a bit of a guess guessing game, but how close do you feel you are to becoming a top level project? It has been a long road. Yeah. Um, you know, um, the stage I'd say we're in is nearing graduation. Like I said, there's a set of us that kind of have the core building blocks put together. And some we have scripted and some we have in our head. And what we're really trying to now is increase adoption, which is, you know, which is what makes any project succeed or fail, right? So we're we're really trying to make it easy to use. And, you know, hopefully within the next few months, uh, you know, depending on time, we're going to try and get this thing out of the incubator, graduate to a TLP. Your most recent release was 20.4, 0.20.4. What's new and what's coming? We have some enhancements that are going to allow us to be a little bit more cloud native. Heron was built uh, with the intention in mind to run on the scheduler Aurora. Okay. Uh, that was supported in-house at Twitter. Uh, but, you know, as things have evolved over the years, Kubernetes has really taken off, and that's kind of, you know, the that's kind of the infrastructure stack that people are running on these days. Yeah. And so we have a decent amount of support for Kubernetes, but it really has some rough edges. So that's that's the kind of work we're looking for right now is how do we e easily deploy, deploy Heron and management, allow people to use it easily for me. There's nothing worse than when you get to a project and then you try and use it and it takes you three hours to figure it out. You know, we want to be able to deploy hair on within 30 seconds for somebody. Okay. 30 seconds is probably a jump. But then <laughs> within, with, but, but yeah, yeah. within a few minutes to get it to, get it yeah. to be easily ran. Is there a, a backstory to the name? So a while back I was doing a... I was putting together a slide deck trying to do a presentation for Heron, and I was doing some research trying to figure out where the name came from. And I reached out to somebody named Sanjeev. He was one of the actual creators of Heron, and I was expecting this big, deep, dark, or, you know, big, lengthy explanation. And he goes, well, the projects at Twitter are all, are all named after birds, and I like long-legged birds, so we picked a Heron. And that was it. That's a good, simple answer. What's stuff written in? What's, what are the, the languages that are used in the stack? But Heron right now, the system is comprised of about three or four. Uh, we have C++ in the mix, Java, Python 3, and then our build tool is all is, is Bazel. So we have all of our stuff managed from a single build tool. So there's some complexity in the build tool as well. But yeah, I think the complexity of the build tool, the complexity of the different languages involved in the project, then, you know, kind of raises the bar for contributions as well. Is that perceived as a problem to solve or is that just in your heritage? I see it as a problem to solve. It's not a bad problem. It's a good yeah. problem. It's right. It's like, you know, how do, how do we make this better? How do we make it easier? And we've come a long, long way. You know, there's Bazel is a tool that, you know, came from Google uh, some years ago. Heron adopted it from the very low levels when it was first released. And as Bazel's gotten more and more uh, mature, we have to maintain Heron to fit within those, you know, breaking releases. We have a committer, uh, Nick, who's really stepped up in that level and has really taken mastery of managing the build for us. So um, he's trying to make it easier. We're trying to improve all dependencies across the board. So he's it, there's, there's a lot of effort there in making it easy to build. Where should we come to talk to you? So the mailing list, uh, dev at heron .org is, you know, probably the, the number one spot. Uh, we have a Slack channel uh, we use unofficially. And I'd say those are probably the two uh, the two biggest spots we're looking. I would prefer the mailing list. You know, it just seems like that's the Apache way of doing yeah. things. Um, you know, but it's kind of hard to adopt email all the time. What have I not asked? What did I miss that you want to talk about? <laughs> you asked a question that I want to talk about more. And, and what it is, is we're really looking for people who have some experience or not even experience, who have the will to want to learn how to run the distributed system, how to manage it. And enjoy managing stuff for a community because I mean that's that's the biggest give back for this project for me like it's it started off in the tech like I really liked you know building part of Heron but what I found I liked more is I like getting into the Apache side of things more it's so interesting to see the process and learn about the Apache way and you know and there's so much to be done you know anybody who's eager to learn anything you know would be we'd be welcome to have you know we'd be welcome to have in our community so you said you have five kids, right? How, how do you find time to work on Apache software? Is this part of your day job or is this something you actually carve out time in the rest of your life for? Um, so actually I said it wrong. I got six kids. I, I, lose, <laughs> I, I lose track of them from time to time. <laughs> <laughs> um, the effort to code isn't it been as much lately, um, just with school and stuff. But yeah. I've never had 
more fulfilling work than working on open source. Out of all the work I've ever been paid for, um, it is the most fulfilling thing I've ever done professionally. And so finding the time, even 15 minutes here and there, just to kind of get yeah. into something um, is worth it. Thank you. Um, thank you for your time. Thanks for talking with us and, and good luck with, with incubation. I hope that, that that moves on. I know that can be a frustrating process, but it uh, sounds like you're getting there. It's definitely been a process of growth. Thank you very yeah. much, Rich. Uh, 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 uh,